Hello Maragon, Moi Kloof. If you are in grade 8, my name is Brandon Bean. I was a youth worker at your school uh, in the last two years. Um, and obviously Tristan has now taken over from me. But this morning or today or tonight, maybe it's a Thursday for you. For us it's a Wednesday. Um, normally you will watch this on a, on a Wednesday morning and part of the, the Worship Wednesdays. Um, and what we do on Worship Wednesdays is we... Uh, worship together as a school normally with the teachers um, and obviously then we'll have a time where we really just ask the Holy Spirit uh, what He wants to, to say to us, what word He wants to give to us uh, through different speakers. Um, but this morning um, I want to take you through a story, a favorite story uh, that's in the Bible, one of my favorite stories. And uh, you might have heard this story before. It's in uh, the Gospel of um, Luke. And it's in chapter 7, verse uh, 36. And I'm going to read through the story. And as I go through the story, um, I'm going to stop and just color in more or less, I think, where it applies to your life. So let's start. Uh, you can either get your version app or just go to your own Bible. I'll give you a second to do that. If, if I don't know, if you're watching this on YouTube and you want to go to an app, um, maybe just get a tablet. I don't know. Okay, so go to Luke 7, verse uh, 36. And uh, so it starts in verse 36. It says, One of the Pharisees asked him, Jesus, to eat with him. And he went into the Pharisee's house and reclined at table. And behold, a woman of the city who was a sinner, when she learned that he was reclining at the table of the Pharisee's house, brought in an alabaster flask of ointment. So let's stop there. Okay, so Jesus is in this town. Uh, a Pharisee invites him. His name is Simon. He says, you can come and have uh, some KFC or some Burger King or Nando's or whatever at my house. And as they're reclining and they're sitting and eating, um, this, this, um, some of the translations say it was a prostitute. And she, she runs in um, without knocking. And obviously in that social standard, um, a woman didn't just run into the company of men. So this was obviously socially something that we were not used to. The Pharisee is not used to this. So she runs in, it's this massive moment, she falls behind Jesus' feet, and she has this alabaster a jar, which is obviously a very expensive. It's, it's the, the same worth as a salary of that time. So she brings this with us. Um, and I want to stop there, and then... Uh, verse 38 says, um, And standing behind him, um, this woman, at his feet weeping. And she began to wet his feet with her tears and wiped them with the hair of her head and kissed his feet and anointed them with this ointment. So what she did is she cried so much that it wet his entire feet. And she started washing or drying his feet with her hair. And, and obviously with the the, with this um, alabaster jar of ointment, she poured it over his feet. And that's an expensive, it's a highlight of the story. Why would she do this? Why, why pour an entire um, fragrance that's the same value as a salary, uh, you know, hard work, out on someone's feet? And verse 39 says, Now, when the Pharisee who had invited him, so Simon was standing there, the Pharisee um, was still standing in the room while all of this was happening. Um, now when the Pharisee who had invited him saw this, he said to himself, if this man were a prophet, he would have known who and what sort of woman this is, who is touching him, for she is a sinner. He knows. Everyone in the room knows who this woman is. They know she's a prostitute. They know she's a sinner. She, they know that um, she is not supposed to, to be crying on Jesus' feet, especially in a Pharisee's house. So it's interesting. If this man was a prophet, he would have known. This is with touching him, for she is a sinner. Verse 40 says, And Jesus answering said to him, And Jesus said this, Simon, I have something to say to you. And I can imagine that Jesus, he wasn't mad, but he made it clear um, in Afrikaans, he would say, I'd say, stem dick And he said, Simon, I have something that I want to say to you. And he answered, he said, yes, teacher. In verse 31, it says, a certain moneylender had two debtors. One owed 500 denarii and the other 50. 
When they could not pay, he canceled the debt of both. Now which of them will love him more? In verse 43 it says, Simon answered, the one I suppose for whom he canceled the larger debt. This is an obvious um, answer. It's, this is not a riddle. Jesus knew that Simon would know the answer. And Simon asked, the one that has the bigger debt. In verse 44, then turning towards the women, he said to Simon, do you see this woman? I enter your house. You gave me no water for my feet, which was custom that day. You gave me no water for my feet, but she wet my feet with her tears and wiped them with the hair of her head. You gave me no kiss, a greeting, but from the time I came in, she has not ceased kissing my feet. This is profound. You did not anoint my head with oil, but she has anointed my feet with ointment. Therefore I tell you, your sins, which are many, and he's speaking to the women, are forgiven, for she loved much, but he who has forgiven little, loves little. Verse 48 says, And he said to her, Your sins are forgiven. Then those who were at the table with him um, to say among themselves, Who is this? Who, is, who has the power to forgive someone's sins like that? And he says to the woman, Your faith has saved you. Go in peace. And, and I want to stop there for a minute and just ask you the question this morning. And obviously, we, you know, we're in a pandemic. A lot has happened and uh, maybe some of you has lost, lost someone. Maybe you, you lost someone that you, that you know of. Maybe someone uh, you know lost their job. I mean, I know someone who lost their job. My brother lost his job. Someone close to us passed away recently. Someone close to us all. And there's two characters in this story um, that you can choose this morning. The, the one character is, is this Pharisee. The other character is this woman. And, and we can choose to be this Pharisee in, in a moment to say, you know, tomorrow I go to school and I just say I want to give my life to Christ and I change my life. And I start talking that way. I start thinking that way. I start working toward this peaceful life, this, this life that Jesus died for. And I can be the Pharisee confronting that person and saying, you know what, yesterday uh, you were making jokes and cussing everyone and bullying people. But today we see something different, which is not consistent. So this cannot be real. Or we can say, you know what, I am broken. We have a broken society and I need Jesus. So I fall to his feet and I say, Jesus, will you fulfill me? Will you enter my life? Because we know that the Father came and he, and he brought his Son, Jesus, to die for us on the cross, to, to make us whole, to give us that peace, to enter us with that love. And, and that's what he wants with you. So if there's one thing that you take away this morning, or today, or tonight, or Thursday, or Friday, is that we need to be that sinful, broken woman in this picture that, that falls to our knees and say, you know what, Jesus, we need you. We, we needed you before this pandemic. We need you now in this pandemic when it's really tough and we're going through a valley and it's dark and we don't know what, what lies in the future. And, and we need you after that, the, this pandemic, when the sun has risen, when, when we can have gatherings, when I can celebrate with a bunch of people, even then in celebration, we need Jesus. You need Jesus. So I want to give you an opportunity, just where you are, and obviously you're watching this over your phone, over a tablet, over a TV, in a cinema, I don't know, maybe in the car, on a, on a podcast, or whatever. Um, I want to give you an, an opportunity now, just where you are, just score down and just ask the Holy Spirit um, where he's been in your life. We can't go back to school and we can't worship together as a school. But I want to ask you, where's your relationship with Christ? Have you fallen to your knees again this year and just say, Jesus, uh, what is the word over my life this year? What is the promises that you have for, for my life this year? And this is for the teachers. This is for all of the students, including so I want to pray for you as I'm closing this conversation. Um, and while I'm praying, I want you to just be still. If you're sitting with a bunch of people, maybe just walk out of the room. Just go sit outside, go sit in your room, and just be quiet. And maybe just hear what the Holy Spirit wants you to hear today. Um, so Father, I want to pray for every student that is 
that is listening to this, this message this morning, or whenever they're listening to it, Father, I pray that you will fill them with your Holy Spirit. And like in this story that, that Luke wrote to us, Father, I pray that, that we will fall to our knees this year and realize that we are broken and that we need you and we cannot fight this fight without having you in our corner, Father. We cannot go through this valley um, without you being present with us. So, Father, I pray that you will come fulfill every single student that is in Marigon Moycliff, that they will just feel your presence and feel your love in this season in their lives when we experience um, people passing away around us, um, experiencing maybe financial um, difficulties. Father, I pray that you will come and comfort us. But Father, when we celebrate that you will always be there and, and also in that situation, be with us. So Father, I pray for every student and every teacher at Marigon Moycliffe that you will bless them in this week, um, that you will show your love on them this week, Father, and that they will um, rise up again and just really feel loved, feel motivated, and go and, and really go into this week feeling that energy that, that, that you had on the cross for us, Father. And I pray that in Jesus Christ's name. Amen.